from Florida, home of horrible, home of fashionable seniors, unfashionable seniors, nosy seniors, and a whole lot more. And also home to Fun Spot, which I'm here for the first time ever. Remarkably, as it's been seven years since I've been in Florida, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be back. Now, this park, because of the earlier situation of the day where we kind of got a deluge of rain, may have uh, caused this uh, particular attraction that I've come mainly to ride to not be open, which is uh, white lightning here. Uh, I'm hoping it is, otherwise this will be an extremely short vlog for obvious reasons. Across the way is also, in the distance I can see, Dr. Doom's Towers and Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. I'm going to Universal Studios tonight for the first ever Halloween Horror Nights I've ever experienced. Very exciting times. As far as Fun Spot is concerned, the park is open. It is not busy for a multitude of reasons. However, we are hoping that White Lightning will be open because that way I will give the ride ops here a lot to do with lots of re-rides. So, hang on for a fun day here or really a very quick fun day at Fun Spot America hoping to get on this coaster, hoping to get on this coaster. I'm not even going to be able to visit Mind Blower and the other Fun Spot America. Uh, so to give you some context, this park has a twin park in Kissimmee, just south of here, that has the uh, rather famous Mind Blower roller coaster, which is actually not rated as highly as this particular coaster despite the fact that it is a rare coaster with an inversion. That being said, it may just be that the park is slow and no one's going on it because as you can see, there are rides actually functioning. I do hear a chain lift operating. I really wish I could get a shot of it right now as obviously this is a great perspective of the coaster in perfect light. For those of you that don't know, they mainly have three attractions here that's uh, really going to catch someone's eye. If you're looking for bigger thrills, that would be the White Lightning Coaster, the suspended Zamperla Coaster here. I believe it is a Zamperla. I will confirm that. Sadly, I did not do my research on that, and I should have, as I've watched other park vlogs from this very location. And the go-kart track, which is a tightly wound go-kart track in the back of the park. Okay, well, welcome to Fun Spot. We're inside. There is actually no admission to get into this park. You can just buy the Fun Pass to get on all the rides, which I just did. Who knows, you know, if I get a lot of done, a lot of done at Horror Night, I don't see any possibility of coming back today, but it is open till midnight, so you can actually leave the park and then come back and do more rides. But as you're gonna see, there's nobody here, so I'm gonna get all the rides I want in, and then some. Now I've been assured that all the rides except for the Enterprise are open today. However, I have not seen this suspended coaster go around, but White Lightning, of course, did go around just after I left that spot trying to get a good shot of it. Regardless, we're gonna go on White Lightning right now and not beat around the bush. 
I've had a lot of not, I've been rather unlucky with roller coasters on my trips this month. So I'm gonna get this one in before it's too late. I've heard good things. I love wooden coasters. Here we go for my first credit on White Lightning. Okay, well that is it. Freedom Flyer behind me is, is open, but they have uh, staggered operations, i.e. the ride ops are kind of doing two uh, rides at a time, which you're probably familiar with if you do a lot of parks. Enterprise is not operating, unfortunately. That's fine. I went on a uh, Enterprise already this year at Callaway Park, so I can take a miss on this one. The only disadvantage of being in a park this empty right now, at least from my standpoint, is that there's no opportunity to get great action shots of the rides because generally you're the person riding the ride, uh, if that makes any sense. You have to time it right. I'm also going to time everything just not to annoy the staff. Um, you're not allowed to shoot on ride, unfortunately, which would have been great. Um, I do believe a Mr. Uh, someone who I always name drop has done an on ride POV of White Lightning in the past, but unfortunately it's not available today, but I'm sure there's plenty out there. So I've done both. In the front seat, walk on rides for both, and uh, yeah, I'd say White Lightning as in GCI Classic, it was great. The overbanked turns and also the overbanked airtime hills that you have here, really effective. Also a wet track, so I think it was running faster than it normally does. Solid ride. Wouldn't call it the most amazing wooden coaster that I've ever been on, nor the most amazing GCI that I've been on. Uh, but for what it is, it was a great ride. And uh, yeah, pretty short, but that should be expected with the size of what this park is. They do demand, uh, bleh, I can't even say it. They deserve praise for having a wood coaster here in Orlando anyway. We're gonna do uh, some more of the park here and I'm gonna give you some atmosphere shots of a generally completely open to enjoy Fun Spot America. I've been here a total of Yes, like 20 minutes, and I've already rattled off two new credits for my count. And there's one other one over there, which is a junior credit, as I made that joke earlier. I could probably use those kids. Definitely want to get into this America-themed Thun House, though. Um, as I said, it's hard to sort of time exactly when to get into these attractions. Uh, this one kind of looks like I could just walk in, but they do need to scan your wristband. Uh, to expand on that, the wristbands cost $53 American which is a bit pricey to be honest, but it is Orlando, and really that's a third of what you're gonna pay at Disney, or at least half on a slower day. Um, there's a lot of rides here, a lot of rides for kids as well, so you are getting a decent value, and if you're here during the day, like I said, that uh, or on a day that is as slow as today, then you're gonna get a lot in. So uh, yeah, I'll get more than what I need in my share in the, la in the hour or two that I'm here, uh, and also, get a lot of cool attractions that normally maybe I wouldn't do twice, but today I certainly will. Focusing on getting some of this footage in now before I do head over and do that attraction uh, and enjoy the park and then give a sum up at the end about some of the other attractions here. So enjoy some atmosphere of Fun Spot on a slow day here in late October. So we are now in the Gatorland attraction, which I've been informed that if I want to feed them, I'm welcome to. And I said, I don't know, I'm going to come back and see how things go with these guys, because uh, I don't have much experience. I'm a bit of a cat whisperer, but not a gator whisperer. Being this close to the edge, you're like, can they just jump over and get you? So they have like baby gators in this side and they're all just sitting there waiting, staring at you, waiting, waiting. They're like, hey man, all I need is for you to look away for one second 
and me and my buddies here are gonna come and grab you. It's crazy how they just actually just stay in spot. They don't even move. Are they sleeping with their eyes open? I don't know if that's actually a thing. Gator spot is included with your wristband, your fun pass. Obviously, if you don't want that, you can uh, buy a admission on its own. Very nice employees here at Fun Spot already. I'm really refreshed uh, coming from a couple of parks closer to home. That uh, yeah, I'll just say that the park ops are a little bit underwhelming compared to what I'm used to here. Or the park ops are a little bit underwhelming compared to what I'm experiencing here. Okay, just so you uh, have any question about is there a lot of them? There's a lot. Look at them all. Wow. Jeez. And obviously, unless it gets even bigger, but this is, I don't know what they do. That's a big, big alligator, dude. How long can they stay underwater? I know they can stay underwater for a while. This big old gator looks like he's just been chilling underwater for quite some time. Turtles as well. We'll say though, it's a beautiful time of day for me to be here. Capture some awesome shots of these gators, as you can see by the magical light. Imagine going for a swim and running into that. I'm getting distracted by all the gators here. I think I might actually go for it and feed them. Oh, we got some parrots as well. Harkening to Bush Gardens, which I will be at in a couple of days. At least this section reminds me of that. With the colorful birds. That is a white alligator. I don't know what they do with the rest of them, like, because when all those other alligators mature, they do not have enough space to hold them all. This guy looks very keen and interested in a uh, convo. But you can't feed this alligator for some reason. The white alligator is more rare. His name is Jayan Kwok. Jan Kwok. Quack? Is that a quack? Is a uh, poorly pronounced crock? Now, I know a lot of people don't like uh, the vlogs that take place in places where animals are in captivity, but I will say, to be honest, that there's probably not much difference between how this swampland would have looked if there wasn't this particular display here. It's small, but very nice. I'm really impressed by the setup here. We got a little bit of Halloween decorum that's a little deflated, but they're trying. We're gonna get some. We're gonna get some food, and we're gonna feed some gators. Okay, so I got my gator food here. There's various packs that I could have bought, uh, up to eight pieces of food. You can't feed the white alligator uh, for obvious reasons as I checked out before. Uh, I guess that's a rare species that they want to protect. Um, also, 
Uh, I did find out that these uh, medium sized gators do go to the main park location outside of the city uh, where they have several hundred acres or at least a hundred acres or more uh, where there's a habitat for the larger ones. Let's see if we can get these sleepy gators to come to life with a little bit of gator food. This is what it looks like and uh, <laughs> it's very familiar. I don't even know what it's I'm gonna smell it. It does smell like a fertilizer pellet of some sort, but uh, we're gonna do all three guys here. It's going in. Oh, that was not a good throw at all. Oh, but we got some life. We got some life. I think they figured out, despite my throw, might also be a little bit afraid because these guys are shy. They're youngins. Sorry about the throw, guys. Well, that didn't turn out so well, did it? I have a feeling they're going to wait until I'm out of here and then they're going to go and take advantage of that their pebble. all the way in the corner. Well, as you can see, they're all kind of gathered over there now, so these guys are going to wait until I'm out of here before they actually get that food. Well, I'm spending all my time in Gatorland here. Let's see what we can do. Gollum is the adult gator. who, to be honest with you, is out like a light. So, uh, I'm not so sure that it would make sense to feed him right now. Staff here are also very, very nice at Gatorland specifically. If you have any questions you ask, they will answer. I'm gonna take this here, little gator food and we're gonna get it right in the middle of the lake. I think these guys are a little bit more savvy to what's going on. As you can see some movement already coming on over. People are jostling. Little does this guy know that uh, I'm going for the center. All right, here we go. Oh. That was uh, popular. It was a popular piece of food there. I kind of want to help my buddy here, so I only have the one piece left. Look at this guy. Indeed, those sly little gators just waited until I was out of the picture before they went and grabbed that food. Before and after there for you. This dude is just carrying a python randomly. Um, although he's a zookeeper. Amphibian reptile keeper. Yeah. Alright, well, I feel like I'd get more exciting action if I gave these guys. Uh, like, they're all waiting. They're clearly all waiting for me to give them something, so I'm not going to disappoint here. We're not going to disappoint anyone. We're going to create a little contest here. Oh. Okay, I feel a little bit guilty. Uh, I feel like I should feed them a little bit more. So I'm going to get another bag. I'm going to do another round of feeding and then we're gonna get out of here. Uh, I'm not gonna put that on camera though. Uh, we'll see you back in the park in a sec. I lied as, uh, yeah, the big one is now a little bit more lively. I seem to be the only person here that uh, they've seen with food today, so might as well get coverage of this little treat. 
couldn't care less. I came back for you, bro. I felt guilty. I came here because I felt guilty that I didn't feed you. And now I feed you and you don't even move. Really? Really, fam? Come on. I don't mean to use that term. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm in the States, I tend to <laughs> say things that I normally wouldn't say at home. So I apologize for those of you that have stuck with me here. All right, we're gonna do one more in the middle here as there's so many. My friend over here, I think you can break these up. I, for some reason I like this guy right here, so I'm gonna help him out. Get it, buddy, get it. Yeah, you got it, bro. There you go. Oh yeah, that's a nice treat. And now I have a lot of disappointed Crocs. Gators, sorry. All right guys, I'm sorry, I gotta go. We got much more scarier things to do later today. As I'd stay in feed you guys all day. I wonder how many cameras have dropped into these pens. Oh dear. These guys are not happy. Oh, that's because there's still gator food there. That's why they're here. There's a red, a yellow, a blue, and a green. I've just gone on the yellow, which is the quad helix, and then I did the green one over there as well, which was my favorite. Unfortunately, the blue and the red, for understandable reasons, aren't open right now. They're actually drying the track. I may come back here to do the Conquest, which is uh, this uh, blue track over here, and the red one, which is just actually a flat track. Seems the least interesting to me. Points I gotta make though while I'm here, and I'll get a great perspective of the park as well from up top. These are the best go karts I've ever been on, period. Like they were, this is fantastic. If you're just coming just for go karts and it's on a day like today, you're gonna be busy for a couple of hours just getting those tracks in. Because, uh, yeah, you get five laps. I will admit on the uh, yellow track that's just behind me here, I completely lapped the guys that uh, I went on the track with. So I unfortunately cost them an extra lap because of that. Uh, so I win. And the other thing is the perspectives from up top on these uh, tracks is just unbelievable at this time of day. As you come over these hills in sections, like just the whole perspective and view of the midway it really is beautiful. I wish I could have got some on-ride footage of that for you because it's quite stunning to uh, behold when you're on there. Crazy tracks as well that uh, they're, these are gas-powered go-karts which are a rare find nowadays and they also it also means that uh, they're super fast 
One thing I like about this as well is that, uh, or Fun Spot in general, they don't mess around here. They just get you on the rides, get you off real fast. There's no diddly daddling. Wow, I'm already really impressed by this park, to be honest. I thought it was just gonna be like a lark, and I wasn't really gonna like spend really more than an hour or two here and just be like, yeah, all right, I've done it. I'll say right now that I'm probably gonna come back here every time I'm in Florida, or at least Orlando, if this is anything to, uh, if this is any impression of the park that I can leave with for the future, because yeah, it's pretty awesome. And because I don't think I'm gonna get on these two other tracks today, the original Thrasher track and also the Conquest, uh, I may have a reason to come back anyway. Because I'm awesome, like, just the way this park looks at night is pretty amazing. And there's a ton of rides. There's a ton of things to do in this park here. So just to talk up, the original track that I did with the green track is called the Commander, which is just over here. This whole area, I believe, probably, it feels like to me, was originally a go-kart facility. And then they, uh, I'm gonna go on the Ferris wheel. And I'll, I'll uh, re, uh, I'm gonna go on the Ferris wheel. And I'll talk to you up there. a ferris wheel that I can ride on my own the last time I was on one I was with my beautiful partner but now it's far south from there well only those of you that actually watch these vlogs would know what I'm talking about but I figured I'd get a perspective of the park from up here as well which wouldn't be uh, too bad of an idea give you an idea exactly of the size and scale of those go-kart tracks. You can get a great perspective of them here. I'm kind of blown away by that offering alone as I kind of just summed up as well. This park is well known for its uh, wood coaster, but these go-karts, I'm saying, don't miss out on it because they are fantastic. Coming around that particular helix on the yellow track, and when you hit that hill and you get a view of this Ferris wheel, it's quite something to behold. And even the signage and the way the signage works up there too, it really adds a nice perspective. You can also see in the distance a certain park. We'll probably get that on the next round. I've seen White Lightning go around for quite some time. Uh, it's not close, it's just it. Whenever you want to ride it, it's just sitting there waiting. The park is, yeah, we're getting into the evening hours and it's, uh, understandably, this isn't a Han event at this park, so, or they're not doing a Han event, and one of the greatest haunt events in the world, if not the best, is just over there. Like I said, don't sleep on this park, because it's quite fantastic. I do believe you also get a ride on the Sky Coaster as part of your admission, which I'm gonna go find out about right now because the only real reason I bring that up is because high praise as well for the suspended coaster, I will say. I'm probably gonna go on the back seat and that'll be it for it, but I love the way that it's located above the midway. Uh, you just get some great sort of soaring perspective because of that. I don't know, it's probably the best family suspended coaster I've been on. I love me a park that's a little rough around the edges, but just packs in a lot of entertainment. And that's fun spot for you. I'm really liking this place. Obviously it's not busy, so if it was full of people, I might have a different perspective of my experience here. I have to admit, for my first park, I'm a bit blown away by how good it is. Now to get a little nervous as the next thing that you might see from me is me after going on this sky coaster. I haven't seen a single person on it today. And for those of you that are wondering, yes, I did win the commander race as well. I felt a little bad because I, uh, I was a little aggressive there. 
at the beginning. I'm aggressive anyway with the driving because uh, I want to win. And I won that race too. The Kent Junior Coaster does not look like it's available. But I'm just going to go and do a deep dive. Get my credit while I'm here. I did say I'd go on the Funhouse as well. I got to hustle. I got to get to Universal and I'm already having too good of a time here. All right, well the Kitty Coaster is closed. So we don't have to worry about that. Sky Coaster is closed. Going to have to wait another day for that. Although maybe not, maybe not. We're going to find out. All right, so for those of you that are interested, you have to get the Mega Pass in order to get onto the Sky Coaster. It's an additional $20 for a ride on it. Uh, I would do it, but I just, I have so much to do today and I have to get to Universal that uh, I'm gonna give it a pass today and I'm gonna come back because I know I'll be back and I will give it a shot the next time I'm here. I will admit it is so slow in the park that I feel guilty not riding certain rides because I want to keep people, you know. I know when I work that activity is what makes the day go by quicker, so just sitting around and not doing anything, it kind of will be a bit tedious. Uh, but that said, I'm gonna go over and do rip curl in the background here, which is a Matterhorn bobsled, or uh, sometimes it's known as a Matterhorn. That's the uh, ride just over here. You also have an old-fashioned scrambler here as well. There's just too much. I did not budget my time accordingly. I could probably spend four hours here just getting every ride that I want in, including this classic antique carousel that you see behind us. Two stories worth of fun. We're almost getting to the end of my park experience because I have about a half an hour left and I want to get on that particular jobby that's going around for the first time in quite a while. So I apologize for not getting I apologize for not getting that much on-ride uh, footage or at least of the cars going through the tracks in this park on White Lightning and also on American Eagle. The reason why is because you need people to be riding the ride in order to capture that, which more often than not, it's only me on the ride. I'd say every coaster I've been on today, I've been the only person on the train. How that affects things like White Lightning and this uh, suspended coaster, I'm not sure. But I'm not sure it really matters because this is the best suspended family coaster I've ever been on. In the back I did my second ride and it takes some serious speed through that final helix. It's kind of like, it's a G-force. I've had a lot more G-forces on that than say most modern suspended coasters. So yeah, it's a great ride. You also get, uh, with the benefit of time, I would have got a lot more coverage for you guys. 
There is obviously a lot of other vlogs from this place to check out, but I'm just gonna say I have high marks because the staff on its own has been probably among the best that I've ever experienced in America. High praise, great chats, super friendly and honest about the park operations. As far as White Lightning is concerned, my final three rides on it were in a row in the back seat and it was much better in the back. Those double ups and double downs are really intense. There are a couple things I missed today, including uh, the sky swing as well. It's looking like a miniature sky swing. It's not that tall and I don't really find those rides too intense. But I did have my three, four rides actually on White Lightning, which is the real reason I'm here. Uh, yeah, like I said, three in a row, uh, back to back. They just basically sent the train right through, no questions asked. Awesome staff again, gotta say. Uh, you know, like you're saving time there, you don't have to go through the queue all over again. And uh, yeah, it, for what it was worth, awesome, awesome. And the back seat, so big time, big time respect to that. Also, uh, it's a pretty good ride. I wouldn't say it's as phenomenal as I uh, was anticipating. Uh, it was a wet track, so it was definitely as fast as it could be. Um, but it's really just how it characterizes this midway, which is the highlight of that ride. Definitely recommend the back seat. Some great ejector airtime. Not as good as Shivering Timbers as far as like the speed throughout, I would say. But a good ride nonetheless. Very glad that I got my day ride and my night ride done. Um, and again, just the staff here, like they're very, very enthusiastic, even if it seems like they are being told to be so, but it seems genuine. Um, now I got like a lump in my throat from my experience here today. Wow, great praise. Obviously this park, uh, I'm not wearing a mask, as you can notice, and this park had a bit of a notorious history last year when they decided to continue operations in the middle of what was going on. Uh, without masks and all that kind of stuff. So they are optional here if you do want to wear them. Uh, I, because I'm on my own and haven't had that many interactions, it hasn't really mattered uh, for myself. So I figured I'd give you an unmuffled version of me for Fun Spot. Anyhow, I gotta head out and I kind of uh, disappointed that I did not allot enough time. That being said, I did originally plan to do both parks in the span of four hours. I'm very glad that didn't happen because it would never have actually worked. And also the weather did not cooperate for that, nor did my flight either. So, that's it for fun spot guys. I'm going to go to another spot just across the highway, which is the real reason why I'm mainly here, uh, or at least one of the top three reasons why I'm here, while I'm here, why I'm here. And if it's as slow as it is here, I'm definitely not gonna be disappointed at that event. You probably figured that out. It isn't another vlog. It can only be Hollywood Horror Nights. My first time ever. I'm super excited. So please join me for that vlog coming up next. But that's it for Fun Spot. Thanks guys for watching. Totally worth the value. Totally worth it on a day like today when you're gonna get everything in without question. And I'll be back. I'll be back very soon. Alright guys, always enjoy.